Okay, welcome to today's video everyone. So in this video we'll be seeing uh, how to use De Moivre's theorem. Okay, so the question says simplify 1 minus i root 3 all to the power 7 times 2 minus 2i all squared expressing answer in form x plus i y. Now there's a very tedious way and we could expand this out to the power 7 using the binomial theorem expand this out to power 2 but obviously that would take way too long so this is why we have our mod arg form and de moivre's theorem this is where it becomes useful okay so we want to solve this question using de moivre's theorem so first of all we need to convert each of these factors to mod arg form so let's first consider 1 minus i root 3 okay so if we want it in mod arg form we need its modulus so that's going to be the square root of 1 squared plus negative root 3 all squared. Okay. So 1 squared is 1. Negative root 3 squared is 3. So we're going to have 1 plus 3, which is 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. Alright, now let's have a look at the argument. 1 minus i root 3. Okay, so remember, let's have a look where this lies on the Argan diagram. Alright, so we're going across 1 and down i root 3. Okay, so it's in the fourth quadrant. So the way we do it, we're going, we're going to work out the tan inverse of the imaginary part over the real part, but it's going to be minus because we're now going down, not up. So it's going to be minus tan inverse of the absolute value of the imaginary part, which is root 3, over the absolute value of the real part, which is 1. Okay, and that's tan inverse of root 3, which is 60 degrees, or pi on 3 radians, and we have our minus out the front, so it's minus pi on 3. And so therefore, 1 minus i root 3 can be written as 2 cis minus pi over 3. Right, so that's how we write it in mod arg form. Okay, now let's compute it to the power 7. So if we're to use de Moivre's theorem now, let's just write this step here, or right, to the power 7. So the modulus will be raised to the power 7, obviously. But now, this comes down and is multiplied by the argument. So we're going to have minus 7 pi over 3. Right? That's, this step here is de Moivre's theorem. Okay, and if we work out 2 to the power 7, I believe that's 128. So you can just check that on your calculator. <clears throat> okay, now I haven't... Uh, put this within our constraints of minus pi and pi because we're going to be adding it to another angle and so it's not worth doing it two times or three times. You can just do it all in one. Okay, so let's convert this into mod arg form. So we have the modulus of 2 minus 2i. Okay, well that's going to be equal to the square root of the real part squared 2 plus minus 2 squared. All right, so 2 squared is 4, and minus 2 squared is 4, so we're going to have 4 plus 4, which is square root of 8. And square root of 8 is 2 root 2. Alright? How about the arg of 2 minus 2i? Okay, well, once again, we're going to be across 2 and down 2, so we're going to be in the fourth quadrant. Alright, so we're in the fourth quadrant, so the same thing applies. We have minus tan inverse of the absolute value of the imaginary part, which is 2, over the absolute value of the real part, which is 2. Right, so 2 over 2 is 1, and tan inverse of 1 is pi on 4, and so the argument of 2 minus 2i is minus pi over 4. Okay, let's get another piece of paper. Alright, so now that we have the modulus and the argument, we can write 
2 minus 2i is equal to 2 root 2 cis minus pi over 4. Okay. Now, we need to work out 2 minus 2i squared. So that's going to be equal to 2 root 2 cis minus pi on 4 all squared. Okay. Now, we're going to square the moduli. Well, the modulus, we only have one, so we're squaring the modulus. So the square root of 2 root 2, not the square root, the square of 2 root 2, we'll come back to that. And this is now brought down and multiplied by the argument. So we're going to have minus 2 pi over 4. Right. When you work out this, this will become 8. So we're going to have 8 cis. And this will cancel and give us minus pi over 2. All right. So now we can use our two uh, expressions in mod arg form. So we're going to get this is equal to, now, what did we have? We had 128 cis of negative 7 pi over 3 multiplied by, so you can put these in brackets, multiplied by 8 cis minus pi over 2. Okay, so now we're multiplying in mod arg form. So remember, we multiply the moduli and we uh, add the arguments. Right, so we're going to have multiplying these two numbers, which we can work out on our calculator, will be 100 and, oh, so rather 1024. And when we add the moduli, we'll get minus 7 pi over 3 plus minus pi on 2, so minus pi on 2. Okay, so what's that going to be? Well, let's work that out. That's going to be ooh, minus 17 pi on 6, I believe. Let's just double check that. Minus 7 divided by 3 minus a half. Yep, minus 17 over 6. 17 pi over 6. Okay. Now, we need to convert this into uh, an argument that lies within this constraint. Right? So, if we add 2 pi onto this, which is fine, we can add 12 pi over 6. That's not going to affect it, because when you look at it, if we... Just say our point was here, for example. If we went around 2 pi, which is a complete circle, we would get right back here. So if we went around in a circle, we'd get back to the same point. So adding multiples of 2 pi, or subtracting multiples of 2 pi to an argument, doesn't affect the value of the number. Okay, so if we add 2 pi, so I might write minus 17 pi over 6 plus 2 pi. Okay, that will be equal to... Let's see. We're going to have 12 over 6 here, and that will be minus 5 pi over 6. Right. So now we have it in that form. Let's write it in expanded cos plus i sine form. So we're going to have cos negative 5 pi over 6 plus i sine of negative 5 pi on 6. Okay, and if you're not confident with doing these in your head, you can always revert back to your calculator. Although it might, it won't be giving you it in third form, so you'd have to recognize your third form. But cos of negative 5 pi on 6, well, what's that equal to? That's equal to, now let's see, cos is in the second quadrant, so we're going to get, hmm, that should be a negative, so let's check, that's, that's going to be negative root 3 on 2, and sine in the second quadrant, so sine of negative 5 pi over 6 is going to be 
Let's see, that's negative a half. Okay, oh, it's not in the second quadrant, rather it's in the third quadrant, so negative a half. So negative i over 2. Okay, and of course we can take out this 2 here and we'll get a half of 1024 will be 512 minus root 3 minus i. Okay, and that's your answer in x plus i y form. Okay, so hope you learned something in this video. Well, that should be a squared there. Hope you learned something in this video, and more videos will be on the way.